It's good to see everybody back. We're talking Detroit Lions football today, and specifically the Detroit Lions defense. We're looking ahead to 2020 and taking the 2019 defensive side of the roster and talking about where we can improve, maybe where we can save a little bit of cap space, and where we might like to see some draft picks. So this isn't going to be super detailed in terms of moving forward through the offseason. It's just a look at where do we begin. What was 2019 like for the Lions on defense, and where do we begin to start trying to make some changes to make it better, hopefully? I'm not trash talking the team when I try to say how bad the defense was in 2019. If you're a Lions fan, you understand that all too well, just how much they suffered on defense. I think it was either the worst defense in football or the second worst defense in football depending on which metric you want to look at, but they struggled all the way across the board. The fallout from that was a, a long losing streak, and then I think we saw about six guys lose their jobs off both the defensive side of the football and then a couple of the strength and conditioning coaches. So we'll talk about that just a little bit more in a minute. I want to start, though, today right here with the, uh, the edge rushers, the defensive end. Some of these guys filter up to linebacker, outside linebacker a little bit. For the most part, these are your edge rushers. Trey Flowers, okay, uh, he was the bright spot on defense this year. A defense that certainly struggled. You bring Flowers over. It's always interesting to see when you bring a guy over from the Patriots who's played really well, you wonder, can he do the same thing and have the same production when he steps into a different defense? And Trey Flowers did that, okay? Trey Flowers had another outstanding season. He gets a big contract with a lot of money. He comes over from the Patriots, and there's no drop-off, all right? He just has another outstanding season for the Lions. Really a bright spot for them on defense. He really filled a, a huge hole there as an edge rusher. He's a stout player. He's a well-rounded player. This is a good, smart player. Now, the only quibble I would have is this $16.7 million that you're going to have to pay him next year. There's this idea that kind of floats around the NFL that a good player is worth whatever, whatever you pay him, all right? And that just, you know, that's something that's simply not true. Statistically, when you look at all the teams in the NFL who have made the Super Bowl over the past uh, nine seasons, ten seasons, even the guys who, even the teams who have made the AFC NFC Championship games, not too many teams make the AFC NFC title games when they're paying a non quarterback this kind of money. Okay? Now, Kansas City's in the Super Bowl this year. They're paying Sammy Watkins somewhere in the neighborhood of $19, $20 million. So it can't be done. But statistically, you're up against it. You've made yourself a lot uh, harder challenge to get to the Super Bowl when you're paying a non-quarterback this kind of money. Okay, so I, I, I hate to quibble with that because certainly somebody like Trey Flowers, man, he makes such a difference for your defense and he's really holding that down. It's hard to get a good edge rusher, really. But keep that in mind. Statistically, when you look at teams over the past decade, teams who are paying this kind of money to a guy who doesn't play quarterback they really struggle even just to get to the Final Four. Forget actually winning the Super Bowl, but it can be done. So keep that in mind as we're looking at Trey Flowers. Heck of a player, had an awesome season. The, the new contract, the extra money didn't make him play any worse. The uh, Coming over into the Lions, who struggled defensively this year, seemed to have no effect on him at all. Really outstanding season for Trey Flowers. After him, at the, at the defensive end slash edge rusher position, you don't have a lot. I think, I think that's kind of obvious. When you look at Kennard and Okwara, I, I, I don't see what they've really contributed that much as, start, as far as stepping up and taking over a starter role. I'm not even overly happy with them platooning. When you go over and look at, say, some of the positions, say, at the New York Jets, the interior defensive line, the edge rushers, they've got an excellent platoon system that doesn't cost them a lot. You look at Kennard next year, he's going to be making $7.2 million dollars. And he's really not even, he hasn't shown the ability to step up and lock down a starting spot. So that $7.2 billion really bothers me a lot when he hasn't shown the ability to lock down a starting spot. Not quite as bad with Okwara, but $3.9 million, you'd just like to see more production than what you're getting out of Okwara and out of Kennard. Now, that's a lot of money for $3.6 million. You could cut both of these players if you wanted to, Kennard and Okwara. Why would you do that if they're good at, you know, being backups? Because you could save in the neighborhood of about $8 million in cap space by doing that. So I, especially with Kennard, I wouldn't be at all surprised if, if that's something the Detroit Lions don't do. Just release him and you clear about $5.5 million in cap space just right there for somebody who, who seems to not really be able to hold down that starting spot. It's arguable whether or not you want to release Aquari, get about $2 million in cap savings there, but it's certainly something I think about. 
Bryant, of course, just drafted him. He's a bit of an unknown. We'll see what he can do in the future. He's only costing you $776,000, so Bryant will be staying and competing for some kind of a job. Just haven't seen enough of him. So after Flowers here at the defensive end, the edge position, you know, it's not like you have to go out and, and hunt down a guy who, who can get heavy pressure on the quarterback. You've got that with Flowers. But what you would like to see is, is somebody, whether it's the draft or just a veteran who comes in off free agency, somebody who can hold up better against the run, somebody who, who can get some pressure on the quarterback from, from time to time, play to play. That kind of a player is what you really need to step up here, and I don't think you've got that guy on the roster right now at the moment. I think Bryant is still a bit of a developmental project. I think he's got a lot of athleticism. I like his athleticism. I think he's got a ways to go, though, before he can step up and hang on to that starting job. So that's kind of what you're looking at there, especially when you're paying Flowers $16.7 million. It's kind of tough to start having $4 million and $7 million. All of a sudden now, in just three defensive ends, three edge guys, You've got the 10, you've got about 27, 28 million dollars locked up in three guys, okay? So I, I really would expect the Lions to start to back off of that financially right here at defensive end and edge. You move over to the interior defense. This is where all the defensive tackles and the big guys live. You got some good players, but you've got a free agent to think about here, and that is, of course, A. Sean Robinson, okay? He only cost you 1.7 million dollars last year, didn't cost much at all. The problem with Robinson, let, let me go ahead and address this now, and I think one reason that you did see several of the defensive coaches get let go this year is that, in my opinion, there were at least five guys, I think maybe six guys I have marked with the red arrows, one, two, three, and then these three guys here. I think you had six guys on defense who had a career worst year. In other words, they had a, a, a pretty steady minimum, uh, a steady, pretty level steady of play that they have been producing over the past two, three, four seasons. And there were six guys on defense this year who just fell off a cliff in their performance. Uh, and and Ashawn Robinson was one of those guys. Harrison was another guy. I hate to put Harrison in there because the age is starting to creep up. You wonder if age is a factor. But certainly with the other guys, age is not a factor. you got Robinson, you have Tracy Walker, Justin Coleman, Darius Slay, Rashad Melvin, especially Darius Slay. You've got six guys there on defense whose performance had been fairly consistent. And, and when, you looked at, when you looked at the Detroit Lions heading into this season and, and the, the, the defense that Bob Quinn had put together, I think you had every right to expect that this could be a middle-of-the-pack defense, a pretty solid defense. Not a top-10 defense, not a championship-caliber defense, not a playoff-caliber defense necessarily, but I think you had every right to expect when you looked at the defensive tackles and Trey Flowers and the, and the cornerbacks that they have, I think you had every right to expect that this would be a solid defense, okay? And instead it was the, you know, maybe the worst in the NFL, if not one of the worst two in the NFL. And, and you know, you look at six different players who had career worst years, and you start to understand the front office's frustration. Now, I, I don't like the idea of trying to kick Patricia out after two seasons, but I certainly do think that you've got a right to ask, hey, what are you teaching these guys on defense? that all of a sudden six guys who have played very well over the past two or three seasons all of a sudden had basically their career worst years. And we'll see more of that in a second. But uh, Ashawn Robinson is one of those guys, okay? Uh, Robinson's a guy who can hold down a starting spot. He, he can hold, he, you don't want him being your best the defensive tackle, your best interior guy. He's got to hold out a starting spot, but he's going to be a free agent. I think he's going to make more money on the free agent market than what the Lions really want to pay him. So I don't expect Robinson to come back at all. I think we're going to see him depart from free agency, and I think the Lions are going to allow him to do that. I wouldn't see, I wouldn't expect to see a lot of money being thrown at a Sean Robinson. After Robinson, we'll come back to Harrison in a second. After Robinson, the talent starts to fall off with Atkins and Kilgo, but you've got hand right there, and we, we, really, we really haven't seen a lot of hand, enough to really uh, give us a good feel for whether or not this guy can be a star in the league or whether he's going to be a bench warmer in the league, okay? Hand's got a lot of potential. He's got the talent. He's got the athleticism, but he hasn't shown that yet. Of course, he had the injury that hindered his progress a good bit. Only $831,000, so I think the hope there very much for the Lions is that Hand will step up and take one of these interior defensive tackle positions or at least be able to platoon and really start to see some production out of that in his third season. So Robinson will be gone. Hands should step up in some way, get more production, and then Kilgo is a free agent. I think he'll be gone. Atkins coming back for $585,000, not much there. 
You go back to the top of the list here, Harrison. I mentioned that he had one of his worst seasons ever, probably his worst season ever. He has been a stud in this league for quite a number of years, uh, probably one of the most underappreciated players in the league. And listen, there's a lot of underappreciated players in the NFL. This is one of the most, okay? This is a guy who has been a very good player in the league for a very long time. And he played so poorly this year that you start to wonder, is age creeping up here? Or did he did he just also become one of these guys who struggled this year because of something that the coaches were teaching on defense or because the scheme wasn't right, okay? So I think that's a big question for Harrison. And, you know, if, if you're – I advise you guys to watch Brett Coleman or um, – Samuel Gold, or listen to Walt Deptula sometime. If any, if any of you guys are listening, Samuel Gold, Walt Deptula, uh, Brett Coleman, I would love for you to put together a video and show us exactly why Detroit struggled this year. We know they did. We know they were, they were pitiful in a lot of areas. But why exactly did the defense seem to have a pretty good amount of talent coming into the season? Why did we see so many guys have just absolutely their worst seasons ever? Okay, going from Harrison and Robinson, and especially over here, Darius Slay, was that something that the defensive coaches were teaching the players, or was that a scheme where a lot of guys just weren't fitting in? What was happening there? I'd love to see that. So if you, if you guys are listening, hit me up with that. So Harrison had, had again, a career worst year, and the question is, is it age? And if it's age, then we need to let him go, okay? Because he's making $11.7 million next season, and I can let him go for a dead cap hit of five, and save $6.7 million to spend on somebody else. Now, if I'm going to throw all the blame on defensive coaches this year for having a horrible defense, and I think Harrison still has a couple more seasons of, of the elite football, maybe an elite, very good football we've seen from most of his career, then I'll be bringing Harrison back because he's absolutely a lockdown starter unless age has started to kick in. So I think that's a big question the Lions front office has to ask themselves with Harrison, is it age or was it scheme this year? Was it a defensive problem there? So that's your that's your defensive tackle position. If Harrison's coming back and playing good, you feel good about that spot. If he's not coming back, you have a ton of question marks here because Robinson's a free agent and Hand is a young guy that we just haven't seen step up production wise yet. He had the He's had the struggles, and then he's had the injuries as well. But I think they would like to see Hand really step up there, make you feel a lot better about defensive tackle. Hopefully Harrison's problems will be solved simply with some of the new coaches that are stepping in on defense, maybe a little bit more attention to the defensive scheme. If not, if Harrison's getting too old, too long in the tooth, if Robinson's not worth giving free agent money to, and if Hand is not going to be able to produce at a level worthy of his draft selection a couple of seasons ago, then you need to start paying attention to defensive tackle. Maybe go out and get one veteran, not a high-money veteran, but a, a mid-level a kind of a cap guy for defensive tackle, and then maybe dip again into the draft for defensive tackle as well. So a lot of fuzzy and gray areas here at defensive tackle um, to, be, to be looked at there. Move over to, uh, this is the safety spot right here, with Walker Wilson Harrison Moore, okay? The beautiful thing about right here at your safety spot is you have almost no money <laughs> allocated to this at all. The four guys here, uh, even if you brought Wilson back at what he made last year, you have four guys making about four, four and a half, five million dollars altogether, which is nothing. You can't get any cheaper than that. The Lions can't have any less money invested in safety than they currently have, okay? So whatever you get out of safety, and you got a little bit of production last year, anything you get out of safety, is a great value. Now, are the players worth having? You start off with Tracy Walker. Walker is a guy, again, who had a career worst season. Now, he's never been a, a great player. He's never been a stud like Harrison, but Walker has had some productive seasons and is a at least somewhat mildly capable starter in the NFL up until this season. And for Walker, I've still got him listed as a pretty solid player, a grade three a guy who should be able to hold down a starting spot, but he's only making $941,000. So he'll be back this year. He'll be competing for a starting spot. You would like to see him go back to what he was before this season. After that, though, with Wilson becoming a free agent, I don't think the Lions will bring him back. Harrison Moore, you really need to add somebody else at safety, okay? No matter what you do at defensive tackle, no matter what you do back here at defensive end financially, 
the Lions definitely need to do something here at safety, okay? Because even if Walker goes back to what he was, which is a pretty decent starter, I don't think anybody else up here right now, even though you're not paying them a lot of money, somebody else needs to be put in at safety, whether that's the draft or free agency, and it's up to Detroit. Something needs to happen here at safety. They need to bring in another good guy here. I would like to see them use a draft pick on that, but a draft pick does take developmental time. That's where the pressure starts to kick in. If you're Bob Quinn and you're Matt Patricia, you know that you're on a short string, especially Patricia, but Quinn also. Okay, So there starts to be a lot of pressure here, and instead of trying to wisely invest draft picks so Detroit continues to try to get better over the next few years, it's easy to want to start throwing money at people, okay? Because it's like, okay, we just got to get better this year. We've just got to at least make the playoffs. We've got to save our jobs. And so the attitude in the building starts to change. And I don't think that's always a healthy environment for these guys to be in. Because like I said in the last Lions video, there's always a lot of stress up front anyway for, for anybody in the NFL. So need to do something at safety. Like to see a good young draft pick put in here, maybe a first or second rounder and maybe put in a veteran safety here as well. Move over to the linebacker spot, okay? Linebacker's a mess, in, in my opinion. Uh, some of you may like Davis, some of you may, may not. Tavai has shown a good rookie season. We still need to see more. In my opinion, linebacker's a bit of a mess, and that's unfortunate because the Lions have put some draft picks in here, okay? Over the past few seasons, Detroit has invested some draft picks over the past three or four seasons and they're trying to get the linebacker space very good and they just haven't yet stepped up. Davis is a tricky one, okay? When you look at Davis, here's a guy who makes a lot of tackles, but keep in mind that defense is typically in the NFL, they funnel everything to the middle, they don't want everything getting broke out, and linebackers have the chance to tally up a whole lot of tackles. In Davis's case, he's not very good in pass coverage, he's not very good at getting pressure on the quarterback. He's not very stout against the run. And he's not even average at all of these. If, if he were average at each of these categories, you'd have a pretty good player on your hand. The, the fact is, Davis is actually below average in all these categories. So even though he has a lot of tackle totals, when you go back and look at the videos and the films and the games, you realize that he's struggling in almost every, every area of defensive football. So when you have Davis, and he's only making three and a half million dollars this year, so he'll be sticking around. But the, the question is, am I okay at starting linebacker or am I not? And I think if you're Detroit, you look at the linebackers and you see, I'm not okay at starting linebacker. Now, moving back up to Tavai, he'll, he'll only make $1.6 million this season. He, play, he had a good rookie season, but he did not have the kind of year where he could just lock down that starting job. So you hope during the next offseason that he develops a little bit more and he can hold down at least one of those starting linebacker jobs if you're Detroit because he showed a lot of good things, but he's still a rookie. He still needs to show some more progress. So we don't have anybody, in my opinion, we don't have anybody for sure in Detroit right now who can just step up and lock down one starting linebacker spot, let alone both. And, you know, it, these days most teams in the NFL are only using about two starting linebackers, even though certain schemes and certain games they may go three or even four. Uh, a lot of defenses these days are really, uh, you look at the total snap counts that the linebackers are getting, in most cases you're only seeing two guys who really get the majority of those snap counts. So with Tavai, you've got a guy here that you hope can step up but, man, we need to see it. With Davis, we've got a guy here who starts a lot, makes a lot of tackles, but really, truly struggles in almost every area of the defense. So you need to see more out of Davis as well. I think if you're the Lions, it may have been, you've got guys here who, who can contribute. You've got guys who can play, but you don't have guys who can, who can really step up and lock down that starting spot. So in addition to safety and defensive tackle here, I would like to see them step up and get another linebacker as well. And truthfully, I'd like to see them really dip into free agency, okay, because you've already invested several draft picks in here at linebacker, and you don't want to just keep throwing, throwing draft picks here at the linebacker spot. So what I would love to see, maybe take this money right here that you've got from Kennard, save about $5.5 million by letting Kennard go, take that $5.5 million, get some kind of a veteran linebacker to step up here, even if they're not very fast, even if they're not great again in pass coverage, somebody who could step up and stop the run, be stout, somebody who can get some pressure on the quarterback. You need somebody here 
to just kind of give some solidarity here and some stability, okay? Even if they're just a good, solid platoon player, you need somebody to step in here. And I think a veteran linebacker could do that for the Lions right here this year. You move over here to cornerback, okay? Cornerback is the position, and I've already touched on this. We're going to hit right here. Cornerback was the position that was the greatest disappointment for Detroit this year. With Darius Slay, you had a guy here who has been an excellent cornerback for several seasons now. I mean, just an excellent, excellent cornerback and has had several seasons in a row where he's been very good. And all of a sudden this season, he just fell off the cliff. Just an absolute horrible season from Slay from a pass coverage standpoint. And I still think Slay, I don't think, I don't think Slay is old enough for age to be a factor at all. I still think Slay is a guy who can step back up and be, be the top guy here. So for $13.7 million, you better hope he's coming back stronger than ever. You could release him for only $2.9 million dead cap, but if you're Detroit, I don't know that you want to do that because you already have enough questions on defense. You're not up against it cap-wise if you're Detroit. You've got enough cap space, enough cap flexibility to kind of play around with. I don't think you necessarily need to let him go. I think that the front office is probably going to view their defensive struggles as mostly the coaches' issues, not the players' talent issues. So my opinion is that even though you could save about $11 million by letting Darius Slay walk this year, I don't think you're going to see that happen. I think they believe that Darius Slay will come back and be the top-notch strong player. And by the way, some of you may hit me up over injuries. I have not watched all of the Lions film this year or kept up with all of the injuries. So if these six guys that I've outlined as having career worst years, if one of them was due to an injury, hit me up with it. Let me know in the comments. I haven't followed all of that in its, in its detail, so let me know. But with Slay in particular, here's a guy that you expected to be uh, have another top season as a top cornerback, and he just didn't. And he had a terrible disaster of a season. And, you know, you're going to be making $13.7 million this year, so you really need him to step up because you've got a lot of cap space invested in him. And really the same thing with Justin Coleman, okay? Coleman's never been the kind of cornerback that Slay has been, but Coleman's been a solid guy, and Coleman had a pretty rough season too, and Coleman's making $9 million next season, and you can't cut him because it would actually cost you $13.2 million in dead cap space, so Coleman's staying no matter what. And so you really hope that the defensive changes you made, and you know the defensive backs coach got uh, canned this year, got, had, to, had to be let go, you really hope those defensive coaching changes that you've made are going to show up here at cornerback because you've got a ton of money invested here, uh, $22 million, $23 million between just the top two cornerbacks. And then you've got Melvin going out as a free agent. Um, I don't think the Lions will bring him back. I really doubt that. But you've got Agnew, Oruare, and Ford. You don't have a lot back here at cornerback. So if you decide to let Slave go, all of a sudden now you're like, man, we've got to get somebody else in here at cornerback. I think Detroit will probably stick it out with Slay and Coleman and expect them to revert back to the form that you saw from them in 18 and 17 and even back in 16 as far as Slay goes, okay? So a lot of questions here on defense. I think the front office and Bob Quinn believes that they had enough talent here on defense to have a solid season in 2019. That didn't happen. You saw six coaches let go. I think Detroit has enough talent here on defense to have a solid defense in 2020. I don't think they need to make major changes or major overhauls. I do think you need to have a few things you need to address. Your depth at defensive end after Flowers. I think you need to figure out who's going to be my starting defensive tackles. And if I don't have the defensive tackle I want on the roster this year, then I need to go out and get one. I do think they need another starting safety. I don't think he's on the roster right now. I don't think he was on the roster last year. And then I think here at linebacker, you need to bring somebody in. You need to bring somebody in at linebacker a veteran guy or a rookie that you really love who's just a hard hitter, a big kind of an impact guy, and bring somebody back in here at linebacker. I think Detroit is set up, and I would have said this heading into 2019 if I'd done a video on Detroit, but I think Detroit is set up to have a solid defense in 2020. They just need to get the scheme figured out, they need to get the teaching figured out, they need to get it nailed down, okay? So, I think that's it. I think we've covered about everything we need to cover for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.